Welcome to Office 2010 Video Project 15. Hey, we're still in Chapter 3 for Word, and we're going to do a business letter. Now, there's a bunch of short videos we've already had in Chapter 3, and so we're going to kind of tie a lot of those tricks we saw in those all together in a business letter. Hey, I've already put my jump drive in, and I have my Word Class Notes folder, and I'm going to create a blank Word document. And I'm going to save it right off the bat, F12. And I'm going to call this Business Letter. And now I'm going to navigate to my jump drive, Highline, Winter, 216, Class Notes, and then Word. Once I have my location, where do you want to save it? What do I want to call it? And the file extension, that's fine, DOCX. I'm going to click Save. All right, now there's two parts to this, actually. We're going to create a uh, letter head. That's just like with a, a picture, the company name, and address. And we're going to save it <coughs> as a letter head. And we're going to have that. And so every time we need to create a letter, we'll open that up. And then we're going to see how to create a business letter. Now, our letter, letter head is actually going to be from the business and the business name is going to be called Business 216 Team. Hey, that's us. That's the name of this class, Business 216, and we're a team here. All right, now I'm going to um, hit Enter. I'm going to come back and format that in just a moment. Why don't we do that right now? Highlight over here, and I'm going to add um, some font size. You can either use this drop down and use the, the auto the preview, auto preview, or you can use the keyboard shortcut control square bracket. And I'm just going to go maybe to 18, 19, 20, maybe 20. And then I'm going to use the uh, bold or control B. All right, now what I want to do here is I actually want a picture and then the address and telephone number and email. Uh, so I want to insert just a simple clip art. You could insert any picture you want or a picture that's a logo of your company. I'm going to go insert clip art and I'm going to type in school. School. <clears throat> Let's see if I can find something here. How about instead of school, I'm going to type graduation. Hmm. Maybe I'll use this one right here or something like it. Maybe this one, whichever one. How about this one? So I double clicked it. Wow, that's pretty big. I'm going to clo close this task pane. I'm going to control and roll to zoom in a little bit. Notice I always can get my uh, percentage down here. So if I roll to get to 100%, that's like what it will look like. I'm going to point to the edge and click and drag. All right. Now, notice we talked about this earlier. The wrap text is square in line, and I want that here. I want this as the very first character, and then after it, I'm going to type an address. Now, you can, for business, you could type the address, telephone number, email, or whatever uh, parts of those you want. We're just going to type building. Building 29, room 308, Highline Community College. Right, and we don't have an email or a telephone number, but we could put it <coughs> like 206-878-3710. And there's an extension to this room. I don't know what it is. I'm going to say uh, 332. Zero, zero. All right, now I'm going to hit Enter. Enter. What we'd like to do here, actually, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, like that. Maybe highlight this and make it a little bit smaller, maybe down to 18. So this control square bracket, this is the open square bracket to go down. The, close, the open square bracket goes down, the uh, closed square bracket goes up. I can never remember which one is which. I just press one if it's down, then I hit the other one. Now, what we'd like is a paragraph level uh, formatting border. Now, a mistake that people often make when they're doing 
a line to separate whatever they want. Here it's the uh, letterhead from the body of the letter. Sometimes people will come and do insert shapes and align. All right. Okay. The problem is it's hard to match up with the margins, and if you change the margins, it doesn't change. Now that's highlighted. You could tell it's highlighted with the uh, select little circles there. I'm going to hit delete to get rid of it. Another thing that sometimes people will do is they'll do uh, underscore and do a bunch of underscores like that. That's not such a good method either. I'm going to control Z. Absolutely, without a doubt, the best method is to do borders. Bottom border. There it is, bottom border right there. Beautiful. It um, will change as we change the margins absolutely perfectly. Now, one thing about this um, border, notice we hit Enter, Enter. I, I did that because I knew that this border, if I hit Enter, it gets carried forward. See, now I'm hitting Enter. Now, one way to get rid of that is to remove the paragraph level formatting. And there's a keyboard shortcut for that. The keyboard shortcut for paragraph, I'm going to show you two here. You, we can, there's a keyboard shortcut to remove uh, character formatting, like up here, and paragraph level formatting. Paragraph level formatting is Control Q. Now, notice what happened when I did that. Right? It went up. Now, I'm actually going to control Z, Z. Just imagine, so imagine we didn't have any of those. I was thinking ahead. All you'd have to do is hit Enter, and then remove paragraph level formatting, control Q, and it jumps back up, and it removes it from here, but it's still on the one above. All right, so there is our... Um, letterhead. I do want to put a date here though. Now, I also want to talk about normal. I think, we, yes, we did talk about this before. Um, we, you can right click modify if you don't like it, but there's another one that's great. No spacing. Let's just go check our paragraph level formatting. Right click, paragraph, and by default that normal has this, oh yuck, that 1.15 and uh, 1.5 line spacing, and 10 after. I'm going to click Cancel. One way to deal with that is this up here. Click No Spacing. Now let's see what we have down here. Notice the boxes around it, so it says that it's highlighted. Right click, Paragraph, 0, and No Spacing. So I'm going to click Cancel. Sure enough, the reason it's right there is because a lot of people don't like that 1.15 and 10 spaces after. So instead of going and changing all of the paragraph level formatting, you can just say apply this style, which means no spacing. Uh, one other thing about before we uh, move away from this uh, removing formatting, I want to highlight this in the keyboard shortcut for removing character level formatting. Why don't we just do a little test here? I'm going to add some paragraph level formatting. Right? So the keyboard shortcut to remove character is Control Spacebar. All right, I'm going to Control Z, and then Control Q would remove the paragraph level formatting. Control Z, 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 because I want it right there. All right, now I'm going to hit Enter. Actually, I. So, Enter. Um, before we save this as our letterhead, I would like a date. And the style we're going to use, and this is the one that's in the, the textbook, um, you know, the date could be here. And if that's the case, then your signature line would be uh, down here also, meaning the uh, alignment, the tab alignment in would be the same for the date and the signature line. But for this one, we're actually going to use 3.5 inches. So here's the middle or actually 3.5 is where we're going to go. So we're going to go to this 3.5. Now, how do we do that? we got to get to that paragraph level dialog box. So I'm going to right click paragraph. You could also this tabs and I'm going to set 3.5. And this is going to be a left. So that's just fine. I'm going to click set. Click OK. Now I want to hit tab. Now, this is a paragraph level formatting. As I hit Enter, 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 it will remain. And since the remaining tabs for the, the closing and our signature line 
and our date are all going to have the same tab in this document, it's perfect. That paragraph level formatting will carry forward. So when we use tab later in this file, this document, it will remain that 3.5. Now I'm going to insert a date. Where do we go? Insert date and time. We talked about this earlier. If this is something you do a lot, then you want to do a keyboard shortcut. I happen to remember the one from earlier versions, which is I for insert and T for time, because you can insert time or date. Alt I T. And then um, I'm going to insert this one. Now, here's something interesting. If this is a template that you're going to uh, open up and use day after day after day, you might want to put the date in and click update automatically. What this does is this means today is January 11, 2011, but if I open it in a week, it'll automatically have that day's date. Now, there is a potential downside of that. If you really need a date hard-coded, um, for your records, meaning this this letter was sent out, then you might not want to do this. But we did learn this is convenient, so I'm going to click OK. That means when, if we open this tomorrow, let's say January 12th, remember we can actually, if we remember that, we probably don't want to hard code it. I mean, we probably don't want to make it automatic if it's we need it as a record. But if you were savvy about it and you didn't want to, you know, have to insert the date every time, you could just have your template would automatically update. And as soon as you get it, if you remember the keyboard shortcut, Shift Alt F9. No, Control Alt F9. <laughs> now I can't remember it. What is it? Shift Control F9. Well, see, I can't even remember it. Shift Control F9. Notice I knew it was one of those combinations with an F9. But if it was something I did all the time, then I can remember, I'm going to control Z. Let's see, control shift F9. That converts this field. Remember we talked about that before, that gray box is a field, and control shift F9 converts it to a hard-coded date. Now that date's not going to change, so if I save it if in my records, it's like that. All right, I'm going to control Z because I want that there. Now, what I want to do, I'm going to save this, Control S. Now, there's a couple ways we can deal with the fact that we, we want to open this time and time again and type a new letter. What, in older versions, we always saved as a template. So you could actually uh, F12 and then change the file extension. Notice, brrr, there it is. the. Uh, location, where do I want to save it, the file name, and then you change the extension. Now I'm going to change it to, there's the dot dot, that's the earlier extension, dot uh, dotx, that means you can't have recorded macros, which is code, or dot dot, that T stands for template. So I'm going to say this one. Now there's our file path right there, and I'm going to click save. Now you could see up here now it changed the extension. I want to show you two different methods and the goal is always going to be we want to open this and type a new letter. We, we never want to open this and then at, hit save and, and replace it. We want to always open it and have it be a new document and then keep that template there which is our cover letter. So I'm going to close this. All right. In, here's our Windows Explorer. The first method we're going to look at is this. And notice we have a DOCX, which I'm going to show you a method in just a second to open that and actually every time you open it, create a new uh, document. But a DOTX automatically, it's saved here, but watch this when I double click and open it. What does it do? It automatically um, opens it. That other file is a separate, different file. If I go back here, Alt Tab, it's still sitting there. That file exists separate from this one. So that's a perfect use of a template when you have a letterhead where now you're going to type a letter. So it comes up like this and you immediately what? F12. And then I'm going to save this, change the name. The location is not correct, so I'm going to change that first. So my uh, jump drive, Highline Winter 216, remember, we're, I just happen to be shooting this in winter, whatever quarter you're in, Business 216 Class Notes, I'm using the pluses, pluses, pluses until I get down to the 
folder I want, I click on it, and over here. Now I'm going to rename this. So I'm going to say uh, letter to Dr. Birmingham. Letter to Dr. Birmingham. Okay, so that's pretty awesome. We have this new file, which it automatically came up as document one and was expecting us to save as and create a new file. Because why? Because it was a DOTX. Now, I'm going to close this. I'm going to close this. And actually, I'm going to find it here. I'm going to rename this. I'm going to click here and hit F2. And then I'm going to put a 2. So this is going to be letter to Jack Birmingham. 2. Enter. Now, watch this. This is new in 2010. We don't have to, we no longer have to use DOTX, although I really, really like this method because then I can just open it up and it automatically is not named and waiting for us to save as. But watch this. We can open up Word. Notice we have no Word files open. Open up Word. File. New. And if I can find it here, new from existing. We click on that, and it, it automatically just lets us navigate. And it doesn't matter what Word document we have. It'll take that Word document and just open a blank one from it. So I'm going to navigate to my Highline Winter 216 Class Notes Word. And I'm going to find the DOC, oh, let's see, where is it? <clears throat> So the D, this is the DOCX. Now normally, when you open, it says open up here, and it just opens it. And then anytime you save, it saves as the change it. But now, this is not open. This is new from existing. When I double click this, whoop, document two. It's, it's as if it were a template. And then I'm going to hit F12 and um, save this as here, I got to show you a, a trick. It's a dangerous trick, but I got to show it to you. I want the same exact name, but I don't want that two letter to Jack. I could just type it out, of course, but I'm a bad typer, so I know all these little tricks to get the same name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to class um, word, and it's a uh, letter to Jack. Now watch this. If I were the, I'm in save as, and there's the name. If I were to click here, watch what happens down here. It just, as soon as I click on it, it automatically takes the name. And then I'm just going to highlight that to and hit backspace or delete or whatever. All right, so now it's got a different name. But what I did was I, I took all of the characters except for that last one. I just changed it. If I had left that to there and hit save, it would have saved as and replaced. I didn't want to do that. All right, so there's our letter to Jack. Now we have to create a letter. Now in the textbook, they talk about the rules for business letters. Um, and in the class notes number 15, I think it is, for video project 15, I also have synopsized the, the notes. And what's great about them is they actually give you guidelines. There really is no one set way to do a business letter. If you're out there in the business world working, you know you get all sorts of different types of letters. And what I like is they give you general guidelines. Now the general guidelines are, you have your letterhead, the date should be two to six spaces below the letterhead. Yeah, that makes sense. I did two, so boom. Now here's uh, one, I did one the inside address, that means we're going to send this to Jack Birmingham, so we're going to put his name, his uh, title, the Highland Community College address, and then below it we'll put our salutation, which means like, dear Jack, Dr. Birmingham. But the inside address, one, two, three lines below. Okay, and now I'm going to type So Dr. Jack uh, Birmingham, President. Now, remember earlier in this class, we uh, created autocorrect. And I should still have it, because this is a computer I'm shooting all of my um, videos on. The way autocorrect worked is we, we 
we typed in HCC, and so now if we type HCC space, that autocorrect corrects it because it, it's, a, it's a method of doing shorthand. The reason that that still works is because this is the same computer. If you do autocorrect to create shorthand, which you got to go back if you don't remember how, you got to watch the earlier video. Uh, it, it all, it'll remember it on this com computer. So there we have it, Highline Community College. Now the next line is Highline Community College, so I'm going to do HCC space, and I'm going to do backspace because I don't want that little space there. Now, uh, I don't remember the address, so I'm actually going to go out to the internet, and we'll see how to copy something from the internet. It gets pretty messy sometimes. I'm just going to go to the website here. This is uh, www.highline.edu slash home. And I think down here somewhere at the bottom, there is, uh, I'm going to do this 24 Des Moines, Washington. I'm going to copy that. Now the problem with copying stuff from the internet is you could get all sorts of junk. You know, you could get the formatting, you could get some images, some um, pictures, some uh, tables, there's all sorts of stuff. But there's a great trick. I copied, I controlled C, Alt Tab, Alt Tab gets me back, we talked about it before, and now I'm going to control V. Now you can see it's got a bunch of junk there, but man, what is this? I love smart tags. We'll get to use the smart tags over in Excel for some cool stuff. Actually in PowerPoint too. Smart tags are great. And this is 2010, so they now have these little pictures. This one's keep source formatting. I don't want that. Merge formatting, don't want that. Text only. Text only is the one that works great from the internet. This in this example, we just it just appears that we got formatting we didn't want. But really, like if you go get financial data and stuff like that, it brings in the formatting, a table, some weird objects, and the hyperlinks. And the great thing about going from the internet is keep text only. Now we don't want this on one line, so we have to e um, edit this a little bit. I'm going to backspace. and then backspace and then enter. All right, so there's our inside address. Now I'm going to hit two lines and I'm going to type uh, dear doctor. By the way, the president of Highline Community College is one of the coolest guys ever. He is just amazing at the helm. All right, so two lines below, we, do, we say enter, enter, and then type it. Now two lines below, enter, enter, and now we start our text. Now I'm not going to type a huge long letter here. I'm just going to do something short, so keep the short, the video short. Uh, <coughs> All right, so I type a little something like that. And now I would like to insert a table. Actually, in the textbook, I'm going to hit Enter twice. In the textbook, um, we just inserted a uh, clip art here. In the textbook, they add something fancy, and they do a bunch of uh, formatting, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, they do some fancy things with the table. We're just going to do a basic table. I just want to say, it says, we are learning uh, about topics such as these. So I'm going to go to Insert, Table. And I'm going to do two columns wide and one, two, three, four, so five. And I'm going to click. So there's our little table. Now we can even format it in the uh, previous video. I don't, about tables, I don't even think I showed you how to format. Up here, these are context sensitive. By the way, oh, what happened to my ribbons? Um, my cursor's right there. The context sensitive ribbons are always are only pop up. Depend, uh, they pop up depending on where your cursor is. So my cursor is in a table, so it knows. There's design and layout. I'm going to click this more button, and you could see a bunch of. Uh, wow, I don't see much of anything. So we'll go like that, and then here I'm going to say topics. 
tab, and then I'm going to say um, All right, and then I'm going to hit Tab. What do we study first? Windows Explorer. And that is File Management. Tab. Uh, the next thing we studied, uh, we're studying it right now, Word. Document Creation. Tab. PowerPoint presentations. Excel. Notice our table isn't big enough, but no problem. Excel, and that is uh, calculations, data. Actually, it's going to be a store data, comma, calculations, data analysis, and charts. Oh, luckily, that little red line. What does that red line mean? It means not in dictionary. In this case, it means I spelled it wrong. So I'm going to do that. Now, what happens? We're, we're editing this, this table. Tab, tab, tab. We forgot one, but no problem. When you get to the end, what does the table do? Tab. It adds a new line. We saw that in Word tables. Actually, when we get to Excel, there's something called a table that does even more amazing things. And actually, it also, when you get to the end and need to add a new record, it just adds a new line. All right, and then the last thing, access. And that will be. Uh, Copy, and I'm going to do this store raw data calculations and data analysis. Actually, we're going to remove that. I'm going to, um, we're going to store raw data databases. That's what they do. Do data analysis and create reports. That's just a, you take your data analysis, the result of your data analysis, and you make it look professional with a report. All right, now I'm going to hit Enter. Uh, and that's all we're going to put. Uh, and then we're going to sign our name. Ah, now we need to tab. Here's our date up here, 3.5. Now watch this. When I hit tab, what does it do? Perfect. Paragraph level formatting carried all the way forward. Now we're going to have a closing. And actually, this closing, I'm going to put, we have one, two lines, which is fine. We should have two lines. I'm going to use sincerely. There's lots of different kinds of closings. And now I'm going to go one, two, three, four tab. Now, if this was an email, we would not need to go t -t 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 enter, enter, enter four times. And the reason why is because we're not going to sign it. But if it's a business letter, you want to leave some room to sign. Actually, how do you like that? I, I did commit a uh, business letter error here. I hope someone, I'm sure like all of you picked it up and are screaming at the, the uh, video here. Of course, I forgot to put some punctuation here. Now, for business letters, um, you're supposed to use a colon. For personal letters, use a comma. Now, if it's a, a formal business letter, you got to use a colon. If it's a casual business letter, you can use a comma, but be careful. So this is a formal business letter, so we're going to put a colon. All right, I think everything else, bloop, everything else is looking uh, good. All right, uh, saw a bunch of cool tricks, uh, especially some of those template tricks, um, tabs, tables. Uh, in our last next video will be our last Word video. We'll get to use styles, like heading one, heading two, to do some cool, advanced, and intermediate tricks. All right, see you next video.